Our next speaker is Dr. Himanshu Mehta, Medical Superintendent and heading the cornea refractive and ocular surface in his practice location, NN2. And he's going to be delving on a very quintessential topic, corneal topography and its role play in uh, enhancing our cataract surgeries. On to you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Chitra, am I audible? Yes, yes. Thank you, Dr. Chitra. Uh, my, my job today is to share my thoughts on why uh, do cataract surgeons need topography and uh, hopefully I would like to convince uh, them. Uh, the topic is uh, basic to moderate. So let's start with the case. A 60 year old gentleman who has come for the cataract surgery and the optical biometer shows 1.4 diopter of astigmatism. Toric oil is planned and toric oil is performed post-operatively. Unfortunately, you have three diopter of cylinder. Now, where the hell was cylinder hiding behind? Now, if you look at uh, the Pentakim uh, scan and if I focus uh, on the, the curvature map, if you look at the curvature map here, there is significant asymmetry in the steep axis. If you see one side, the hemiviridian shows 40 diopter uh, K values, the other side shows 40.6 uh, diopter, huge, almost uh, six diopter of difference. And uh, uh, unfortunately, the uh, SIN K values of K2 uh, would take average of this thing. Uh, K1 also would be average. And finally, the difference between two would be something which uh, a keratometry would take as an astigmatism. So remember, keratometry talks the language of meridians, whereas topography talks the language of hemimeridians. Astigmatism, when we talk about astigmatism, we normally classify as with the rule, against the rule, or oblique. All of them can be suitable for toric aisles. However, the irregular astigmatism is one which may not be very suitable for toric oil. Remember, in all such kind of cases, if you do keratometry, you may end up getting some values, but unfortunately, it may not be very accurate. So uh, taking the previous question, uh, which we were discussing about uh, trifocal or anything about uh, uh, such lenses uh, in uh, in keratoconic eye, well, keratoconic eye would be highly irregular eye but uh, in such kind of cases, as Dr. Rohit was talking about, your higher order aberration uh, would not be taken care. And hence, uh, all any of these lenses do is just take care of lower order aberration, which is sphere and cylinder, and which may not give the best outcome. So yes, corneal topographers are mandatory if you're planning to do any specialized uh, lenses or premium lens, so-called. So when we talk about topographers, uh, we refer to the Placido's based topographer earlier, and they come in different size, shape, uh, different ring size, but all of them talk one language, which is steeper the cornea, warmer the color. Uh, Rabinovitz and uh, colleagues, they, they describe the topographic pattern into 10 common topographic pattern, of which one which we all love to hate is the asymmetric uh, bow tie pattern with the radial skewing and inferior steepening, which is a typical pattern of keratoconus and which every LASIK surgeon hates to see. Whenever we look at the topography, there are certain checklists we look at the topographer apart from the details of the patient, good fixation, good exposure, color scale, whether the map is proper along with uh, comparing with the other eye. Let's see them one by one. One case, uh, a young male who has come for the LASIK surgery, looking at this kind of thing, if we look at the pattern, well, it looks like a friend which suggestive of a keratoconic uh, uh, pattern. Uh, so, of course, the LASIK is not the best option here. However, if we see the raw data, we see the centration is not proper. So, it's a false positive because of poor fixation. Moment we correct the fixation, the topography becomes regular and patient is possibly suitable for uh, the LASIK surgery. Hence, it's a, a good fixation which is mandatory to see. One more such kind of case, when you look at uh, the topography, you see periphery, there are small dots kind of thing, which actually assumes the topography uh, data there. But if you see, there is a poor exposure from there. So your data coming from uh, such area is not very, very reliable. And remember, such thing becomes very important when you are doing something like uh, topo-guided PRK for keratoconus and all such kind of cases to regularize the cornea before you perform any cataract surgery there. So good exposure of the cornea is very important. 
the color scale changes the way uh, keratoconus looks or color scale changes the way topography looks so it's very important to know what color scale you are dealing with also the maps like axial curvature map tangential curvature map these maps same cornea may look very different but what axial map does is it gives you a pattern diagnosis and very easy way to diagnose whereas tangential map gives you more of a localized abnormality in which can be accurately detected so please make sure you look at the map also something called enantiomorphism where most of the typical topographies have mirror image uh, which uh, which is imperative to see when you are seeing both the topography so keep both the eyes uh, topography print out next to each other and confirm whether uh, they are comparable with each other uh, so if the topography is so good, why do we think of something else the higher than the normal topographer, which is tomographer? Let's see a case here. A topographically normal eye, uh, which is uh, sent to us uh, with a uh, compound myopic astigmatism, uh, where the pachymetry values done on ultrasound uh, was normal, 500 micron. And you can see uh, the topographic picture, which we earlier saw, looks like with the rule astigmatism in both eyes and looks to be fine with 500 micron pachy. Having said that, uh, when we look at the pentachem values here, the thinnest point is not in the center and it's 470 micron. Posterior surface is not looking normal and this is not a case where I'd be very keen to do it in a, a LASIK surgery. Rather, I would do a lens-based surgery in such kind of cases. So if we do not have a, an elevation-based topographer, uh, we would have missed such kind of uh, thing. And that's the role of elevation-based topographer here. Uh, Placido-based topographer, they give real topography from the first Perkins image or the teofilm, uh, whereas it does not give you data from the posterior surface and the entire corneal uh, surface. Whereas elevation-based topographers can give you the entire interior segment topography, in which is much more accurate. Whenever we talk about elevation-based topography, the topographic patterns are usually two. One uh, is the island pattern and second is the saddle pattern. Island pattern normal is a prolate cornea or where there is a mountain in the center, which is very typical of a pattern of keratoconus. So if you see here, this is typical pentachem uh, map. The first map is curvature map, which we know that uh, there are 10 patterns. The second map here is anterior elevation map, two types of pattern. Uh, whether it's an island or the saddle pattern, the posterior elevation map there, again, two types of pattern. And next comes the pachymetric map, which is self-explanatory. If we see an example, we go one by one. First, the data of, from the patient, the K values and quality score. Next, we go to the curvature map and we know 10 types of pattern. What we see here is radial skewing and inferior steepening, which is typical of keratoconus. When we, then we go to the anterior elevation map, two types of map. Here we see the uh, mountain or uh, the island in the center, which is possible in keratoconus. The posterior elevation map also shows a mountain in the center, again, typical of keratoconus. The pachymetric analysis shows that uh, it's a 490 pachy with a K max around 44, I mean, 54 we are dealing with nothing but a keratoconus. Very simple. So even though these are newer machines, uh, they're still quite simple to do. There are certain other benefits of such kind of topographer. Well, for the cataract surgeon, it tells you about regular, irregular astigmatism. It helps you to detect keratoconus, pellucid margin degeneration, helps you to see the IL power calculation as Dr. Chitra was talking about in LASIK patients. Uh, uh, it also tells you about the spherical aberration or aspherity of the cornea. It gives us a story about angle kappa, angle alpha, and sometimes it also can help you to grade the cataract and along with uh, the outcome of your toricity. One such uh, uh, advantage of one such instrument like eye trace, it can tell you about the angle alpha, angle kappa. Well, why is it important? Well, we know that very significant high angle alpha can be poor candidate for multifocal, which will possibly lead to glare and halos. So Another uh, such kind of thing, I shall be finishing pretty soon. Another such kind of thing, which can be dysfunctional lens, where which can help you to see the irregularity in the transparency of the lens and can help you to diagnose cataract much earlier before uh, if anything else goes on. 
Uh, another uh, interesting thing which Pentakim uh, does, it, it gives you a zonal key values, which is extremely important in detecting the IOL power, especially post uh, refractive surgery. Uh, adding all these things into the calculator can give you tremendous outcome. Not only this thing, certain topographers can actually give you a detailed interior segment analysis and can be used for a comprehensive dry eye worker platform also. Pellucid margin degeneration, which gives a very typical against the rule astigmatism with a typical uh, kissing bird sign or butterfly wing pattern. Uh, it's very important to have your topographer, hence you can put a high toric uh, cylindrical power and uh, topographers like iTrace can actually tell you a story that how much quality of vision improves in these cases. It also can uh, show you the outcome of toricity and whether it needs to, uh, to be rotated and how, can, uh, how good outcome it can give you. To summarize, corneal topography is mandatory before any premium IOL, especially toric and multifocals. Newer elevation-based topographer can image the posterior surface of the cornea also. And topography machine, along with the other frills, uh, can, be, can bring us tremendous value in cataract surgeon's practice. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Himanshu. As always, you have uh, covered just absolutely everything and leaving us very few questions to ask you. Just uh, some of us could have this curiosity, like, would you be able to use the EKR value in any other formula other than holiday two? Is that possible? I, I would definitely uh, agree that you can use EKR. So EKR is not a formula. Basically, it's an equivalent key reading comparing both anterior surface, posterior surface, the refractive index and everything. So what it has done is it gives you a zonal key uh, reading in uh, these areas. So it certainly does not mean that you need to use only Hollaray formula. In fact, uh, the same reading you can actually fit into your ACRS calculator as the different uh, topographic uh, K reading into zero millimeter, one millimeter, two, three, anywhere. So yes, of course, what it does is it gives you a liberty to analyze your K values in different zones and uh, still tell you the entire uh, story in a glance. I'm not very sure, unless you are very sure. I felt that it has greater application in holiday too, though I do not have, at this point of time, not remembering the points to substantiate that. Of course, what you say makes sense, but uh, it is just a thought. Is there any specific data which you can take from a topographer to incorporate into IUL power calculation? Or is it uh, uh, an impression of the topography which helps you decide which IOL technology to go in for. Okay, so one interesting thing, uh, remember that the keratometric values which you get on an optical keratometer or your manual keratometer uh, versus the, the SIMK values which you get in a topographer are not same. They cannot be comparable. Okay. Now, in your hand, whenever you do any surgery, uh, whatever we call surgeon's hunch or surgeon's factor or your correction, which you slowly evolve into, uh, would be totally different when you drop of head, change the K values from your uh, biometer to directly a topographer. Yes, if you start using topographer for every uh, case of yours, you may ultimately get your uh, outcome optimized uh, to the level that you are fine. But a drop of head, to calculate your spherical power if you use uh, your topography machine may not be the smartest idea. Having said that for the toric IOL, to know the toricity or to know the what power you want to uh, take, how much difference, how much cylindrical power you want to take, you can use either of them. It's absolutely fine because there, when you enter those values, your toric calculator just uses that to know how much uh, astigmatism you're going to correct. Now, for that, if you are very sure and if you're very comfortable with your uh, uh, topography, you surely can uh, use that. But to calculate your spherical equivalent, uh, I won't say it would be a smart idea. Yes, very well answered, Dr. Himanshu. Um, I wanted Dr. Rohit Shetty to tell me this. Since you have a setup where you have all the topographers with you, which would you suggest as the most comprehensive to be used for a cataract surgeon? Dr. Rohit? 
I, I, I personally feel, uh, I think Imam Shu uh, showed all from the Pentacam, but any uh, uh, modern day shine flood based uh, uh, imaging would be the best way because any Placido, especially these are elderly people and a lot of them have ocular surface issues, so you may not get a very proper value. But moving forward, I think the best topographer would be a OCT based especially because it has very little artifacts as far as we see uh, what we see with these uh, topographers. And the most important thing with the OCT-based uh, hybrid topographers today is it helps you give you epithelial mapping. Uh, <clears throat> like Imam Shu said, those uh, one area flat, the other area steep, uh, we don't know at that point of time whether we had epithelial mapping. That could be an epithelial changes itself. And uh, especially in this elderly population, we see a lot of changes. And uh, epithelial irregularity is an indirect uh, marker for an ocular surface disease itself. So way forward, I think, uh, epithelial obesity based. But at this point of time, any modern day shine plug or combination of shine plug with placido would do. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dr. Roy. That was exactly what I wanted to hear. Expert panel, do you all have any thought to share? Dr. Mahipal, you would uh, like to uh, bring up some point when you're talking on topographies before you go on to the next talk? No, I think uh, uh, Himanshu, uh, a great talk as always. Uh, one needs to have a, the concepts of a topography uh, or the, uh, the keratometry of a particular patient because nowadays we are looking at uh, uh, making the cataract surgery into a refractive surgery. So what is very, very important is that if you are going in for premium lenses, and I think uh, the trifocal lenses are coming of age. Uh, and if you have to get a correct uh, power and nearer to hematropia, because that's what we are aiming for in all these trifocal lenses, then under those circumstances, the correction of astigmatism becomes something very, very important. And that is where the uh, topography does. And uh, normally, I would uh, say that in case there is a difference uh, which is of significance between a topographer and an IOL master slash a auto rep uh, auto rep keratometer, then uh, then I would be very very diffident in going in for a toric lens, especially in those cases, because then you really don't know. And these are specifically in cases where uh, the patient may have a keratoconus or something like that, and you have done a cross linking and you want to do that. So if there is a big difference, you need to analyze that particular thing and decide whether you actually want to be. Uh, very, very sure to go in because the demand of the patient becomes very high. So the topographer will give you whether there is symmetry, there is asymmetry, whether the posterior port is uh, the thing and TK value, etc. that you are getting only in the IOL Master 700. Uh, either you use that or you have the nomogram for uh, standardization with the posterior float that needs to be done. So all in all, I would say even ocular surface anomalies, which uh, Rohit has talked about, that is also a very important thing that nowadays you can uh, find out with the OCT based uh, hybrid uh, topographer, because that is where the patient remains rather unhappy. So all these things in premium IULs is really upping up the outcomes. And that is very, very important. One other thing which Imanju said, I think in India, we have still not moved on to a lot of people of, uh, don't have the eye trace. But I think dysfunctional lens syndrome is something which is very, very important. And I think that is going to be the future tomorrow, uh, where patients are complaining of some uh, problem in their vision. And normally, uh, you see on a slit lamp and say, no, no, you don't have a cataract and come after this thing. Uh, but if you put them on an eye trace and you find out that uh, the uh, there is a huge amount of abrasions, the contrast, the quality of vision has gone down, then you can tell them and show them on the eye trace that uh, this is what is happening. And uh, if you put a new lens, this is what is going to happen. So I think uh, these are uh, uh, obviously the updates uh, or upgradations that all of us will soon have to have in the practice as we move on to premium uh, practice. And topography also, uh, I think toric lenses are now gaining. The only thing is I have been uh, fighting it out with the manufacturers that they should have a separate price for low toricity versus high toricity. So that uh, even a person who's coming with a one diopter toric uh, can go in for a toric IUL because that really changes the outcomes for a patient. So topography, I think, is uh, mandatory, uh, specifically in the uh, premium IUL patients that you are looking at. Yes, wonderful talk, Dr. Himanshu, and very well summarized by Dr. Rohit and uh, Dr. Mahipal. Lot of things uh, brought out. So I would want you to stay on for a bit more, Himanshu. We can deal with.